الحمد للہ رب العالمین الحمد للہ رب العالمین الحمد للہ عدد خلقه و زینت العرشه و مداد کلماته و منتحا علمه و جمع ما شاء و خلق و برع فهو عالم غیب و شہادتی الرحمن الرحیم المارق القدوس العزیز الحکیم اشہدو ان لا الہ اللہ وحده لا شریک اللہ له الموک و له الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو الحي الذي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير واشهد ان محمدا عبده رسوله وحبيبه وخليله وصفيه الذي ارسل بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهر على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون اما بعد i would like to thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give praise to the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam for this event for you all coming here the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam said, uh, the most thankful of people in the eyesight of Allah are those who are most thankful to people. And I want to thank the brothers who organized this here meeting for inviting me here to share the little that I have learned uh, in the Bilad of Sudan. I would like to also say that this country, uh, Canada, is a place that is uh, revered in the hearts of African Americans. Because for us, it was a place of hijra. It was a place of uh, it was a place of escape from Anglo of the Anglo Americans. It was a place of freedom for us, and it's no wonder that Sidi Hamza was able to light the fire of Tajdeed in this land, and it was it's, it's burning very brightly, even more brightly than in the United States. But it's, it's no wonder, the reason being because this land has always been a place of freedom for people, and especially our people. So I'm grateful to be here for that reason. And I'm also humbled to know that I'm speaking in a land where my ancestors made the hijra from uh, the processes of slavery and oppression. I was asked to speak about the concept of tajdeed. And I can only speak uh, about the concept of tajdeed as I've seen it and, and studied it as it, it was activated in the African continent at the hands of Sheikh Uthman ibn Fudio and other scholars. First off, our scholars have said, or the proofs or the delil for the concept of tajdeed is from the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, as it was uh, related by Imam al-Bayhaqi on the thought of Abi Huraira, who said that the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam said, inna allaha ba'atha li hadihi al-ummati the Rasul said, Verily Allah will raise up for this ummah at the head of every 100 years one who will renew the religion for it. And Imam Sufyan ibn Ayana, one of our fuqaha of Medina al Munawara, he said, Balagani innuhu yakhraju fi kulu miyata sanatin ba'du mawtu Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rajulun min ulama'i yuqawwiyu allahu bihi adin. Imam Sufyan said, it has reached us, or it has reached me, that it has been, uh, that, that there will appear at the head of every 100 years after the death of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam, a man from among the scholars who will strength, who, by whom Allah will strengthen the religion. So first off, the concept of tajid is based upon knowledge. Knowledge is not divorced from, I mean, tajdeed is not divorced from knowledge. That if you want to revive something, you first need knowledge. So when you find a community about to go through the concepts of tajdeed, you find there will be one that will emerge among them that will light the fire of tajdeed, we meaning traditional learning, a learning which has a senate going all the way back to its founding scholars. That's true tajdeed. Again, Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, he related that the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam said, Inna allaha yab'athu li hadhi al-ummah ala rasumiyatu sanatin Man yukarara laha deenaha. Hadith having the same meaning where the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah, Verily Allah will raise for this ummah at the head of a 100, every 100 years one who will renew its religion. And Imam Ahmed ibn Hanba also said, Inna Allah yuqaydu lil nasi fi rasu kulu miya sinatin 
مَنْ يُعَلَّمَ النَّاسُ وَسُنَّنْ وَيَنْفَعْ عَنَ الرُّسُولِ اللَّهِ الْكِذَبِ That Allah will uh, raise for people at the head of every 100 years one who will teach the people the sunnah and also will negate from the Rasul liars or lies. Imam Suyuti said, on the conditions of the Mujaddid, he said, in the Mujaddid, قَدْ يَكُونُ وَاهِدًا أَوْ أَكْثَرْ لِأَنَّ الْمَحْدِي وَعِيسَى مَعًا كُلُّهُمَا مُجَدِّدًا فِي آخر مِيَا يَبْقَى مِنْ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ Imam Suyuti said, that the Mujaddid can be one person or it can be many. You can have one person who emerges in the United States and he lights the fire of Tajdeed and it begins to flame throughout the United States. Or it can be several people, a man in Africa, a man in Europe, a man, a, a, a man in, in Saudi Arabia. It can be several people and his proof is that the Mahdi and Sidna Isa alayhi salam, will be the same time and both of them will be mujaddids. So that's a proof that the mujaddid can be one or more. He also said concerning the conditions of the mujaddid, وَقَالَ عَيْدًا لَا يَكُونُ الْمُجَدِّدْ إِلَّا عَالِمًا بِالْعُلُومُ الْدِينِيَّ الظَّاهِرَ وَالْبَاطِنَ نَاصِرًا لِلْسُنَّةِ قَامِيًا لِلْبِدْعَ He said that the conditions of the mujaddid is that he must be a scholar, he must be knowledgeable of the sciences of this religion, both its outward and its inward. He's not just a faqih who beats people across the head with hadith and declare, oh brother, you're making a bid'ah. No, he's a person who not only does he know the fiqh, he knows the usu, but he has also mastered the inner character of the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, and he revives the hearts of humanity. He teaches people good character. He teaches people how to be tolerant. That's the true mujaddid. Imam Suyuti also said, A tajdeedu la yakunu illa ba'du in diras. That tajdeed will never be except after the obliteration of knowledge. So tajdeed, which is a powerful and positivistic thing, occurs at the time of a negative thing. Which means also there's hope. It gives hope to the Muslims, especially when we see the prevalence of the end of time. All the signs of the end of time have occurred for any Muslim who has intellect to see. Every one of the 72 signs of the end of time have occurred among the Muslims. And we see it. And when you see these signs, you become depressed and you lose faith. But the person who's involved with tajdeed, the fact that he's involved with the tajdeed, he himself is a positive sign of re renovation of that time. And he can never occur except after indiras, after the death or obliteration of knowledge. Imam Suyuti also said, "Fi ma'ana tajdid, al ma'ana tajdidu ihya'an man ma'it in diras min ilm bil kitab wa sunna wal amru bi 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 muntadai hima." He said also that the meaning of tajdid is the revival of that which has been effaced from knowledge by means of the book and the sunna, and he also commands the people to establish the book and the sunna. This is the job of the mujaddid. But not, not only is this the job of the mujaddid, this is the job of every single Muslim who's alive. Because either we are part of the solution or we are part of the problem. Either we are the signs of the end of time. Either we are like the Rasul said, the liar will be trusted. The lie will be trusted and the truth will be denied. Either we are proof of that or we are proof against it. Either we are chayin, as the Rasul Islam said, we are treacherous and people trust us, or we are amin and people mistrust us. How many times do we read in internet open and just wicked slander of our brother Hamza for no reason? One of the signs of the end of time, you will see people mistrusting the truth, trustworthy person and trusting a person who is not trustworthy. So either we are part of the solution or we are part of the problem. Shaykh Uthman ibn Fudiyo said in his Ihya Sunnah wa Ikhmar al-Bid'ah, he said there are three prerequisites of tajdeed. There are three negations or things that you shouldn't do if you're involved with tajdeed. The first one is to be preoccupied with the faults of people. That the duty of the mujaddid 
It's not to go around counting how long your jalebi is and how long your beard is or how many hairs you've clipped off of your mustache or sister, your, your thobe is not long enough or your hijab is not covering your left eye. That's not the duty of the mujaddid. The duty of the mujaddid, first off, is that he is not to be preoccupied with the faults of other people. He assumes the best of people. He becomes like what Ahmed Ubaba, when he was describing his, his teacher, the Mujaddid in the 10th century, Muhammad Ubaq Yugu, he said that he felt that the only evil there was was ignorance. That was the only evil. And that every other evil resulted from ignorance. And it was his duty to remove ignorance from the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he looked at them with good and he saw the inner core of that person. Another scholar by the name of uh, Abdul Qadr Dantafa, one of the great scholars of Nigeria, the grandson of Sheikh Uthman ibn Nufudio, he said, I took an oath with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I would look at creation with the same eye that Allah looked at creation when he decided to create them with pure mercy. And he would say, and this was regardless whether that person was Muslim or Kafir, I would have the same opinion. I would look at his roar and see his roar, that his roar is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and my duty is to remove the disbelief from him, to remove the ignorance from him. This is a profound way of looking at things. And when you have this type of opinion, you can't help but be successful, and you don't alienate people. He says, Sheikh Uthman says, وَمَنْ كَانَ مَقْصُودُهُ حَتْقَ أَسْتَارَ النَّاسِ وَاشْتِقَالُ بِعْيُوبِهِمْ فَاللَّهُ حَسِيبُهُ وَسَائِلُهُ here, Sheikh Uthman ibn Furyo gives the first principle of the Mujaddid. He says, he whose objective is to tear the veil between Allah and the slaves and to be involved with people's sins, to be preoccupied with people's sins, Allah Ta'ala will reckon with him and will question him on the day of judgment. He says, because whoever follows after the faults of his brother, Allah will follow after his faults, even into the recesses of his home until he reveals what's going on in his home. He says, because a believer always adheres to excuses for his brother, and the munafiq, the hypocrite, always searches after faults. And Allah is in assistance of the slave as long as he is in assistance of his brother. And it says in the Muwatta, لا تنذروا في ذنوب الناس كأنكم أرباب وأنذروا في ذنوبكم كأنكم عبيد. In the Muwatta, and this is related from Isa ibn Maryam where he said, do not look into the faults of people or the, the, the faults of people as though you were lords, but rather look into your own faults as though, as though you were slaves. And Imam uh, As-Sulami said in his book, Kitab Ayyub al-Nafs, he said, وَمِنْ عُيُوبِهَا إِشْتِغَالُهَا بِعُيُوبِ نَاسِ وَعَمَاهَا عَنْ عُيُوبِهَا And among the faults of the self is you being blind to your own faults and being preoccupied with the faults of others. So this is the first principle of the mujaddid. And every one of you and every one of us whose job, and remember, that's what we're here for. Because we know you have to realize that if you made immigration from the lands of Islam to the lands of disbelief for reasons of dunya, that you're in a state of disobedience. This is the law. This is what our scholars have said. We have to call a spade a spade. And the only thing that would change your disobedience is you be involved with calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and giving life to his deen. That's the only thing that's going to make it justified for you having your six-digit your six account and your Lexus and your, uh, and your job at IBM and Oracle is that you're calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you came here for the dunya, that's all you're going to get and you're going to wake up and that dunya is going to be a nightmare for you. You're going to wake up and you're going to lose your family. You're going to lose your daughter. Your son is going to have his hat on backwards with his pants dropped down below his behind singing rap music. He don't want to, he want, he don't want to speak Urdu no more. And he don't want to go to Pakistan. If you try to get him back, he's not going to go. That's if you don't call, if you don't call the people to the dean. If you stay here, your children become what you secretly worship. 
What you secretly, what's inside of your heart, what you make in tawaf around, your children will become that and you will lose your family. And the only way to save your family is that you have to go out and call the people to the deen. In order to call the people to the deen, you have to have a good opinion of people. You have to assume the best of people. You have to see that kafir, that person who's a non-Muslim. You have to see him, you have to see him as, a, as, a, as a potential Muslim. You have to see his ruh, his essence, which is slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because every ruh, every ruh is knowing of Allah and is a slave of Allah. Is the person who has that ruh doesn't know it. That's why he's called kafir, one who covers up. He's covering up his ruh, his essence which is a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your, your job as a Muslim is to uncover that, and that is the purpose of tajdeed. The second uh, principle of tajdeed is to realize that we who are involved with reviving the religion of Islam, we are not to make objection or to object to people in matters where there are legal disagreements. He said, Al-Inkaru muta'alikun bima ujmiya ala ijabihi aw tahrimihi. That making objection is connected to that which is agreed upon concerning its obligation or its prohibition. What Sheikh Uthman ibn Fudio was doing in the 18th century is that he was trying to narrow out who his enemies were. He was not doing like the so called people, so called Salafis of this age, who make enemies the Muslims. No, he was singling out who he was going to fight among the kafirun, and he was trying to bring the Muslims in. How do you bring the Muslims in? By, name, by not making inkar or making objection in those things where Muslims disagree about. We make no disagreement. If Imam Malik, he's sound, all of the madhahibs are sound. All of them are sound. We have no evil opinion of any of our mushtad imams. In order to be this way, you have to understand that all the mushtad imams are correct and we make no inkar of them in order to bring the whole ummah under one banner so we single out who our enemies are. Because now we don't know who the enemy is. We think the enemy is the brother with the kufi or the beard. No, any person who says, La ilaha wa Muhammadan Rasulullah, if he's a sinner or if he's a saint, it doesn't matter. He's under the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are obligated to respect him and honor him. That is the principle of Islam, which brings us to the second the third principle that Shaykh Uthman ibn Fudio built his tajdeed on. He said, لا يجوز لك أن تبغيد الفاسقين من أهل لا إله إلا الله من كل واجهن فضلا أن أن تبغيد الصالحين منهم بل تبغيدهم لفسقهم وتهبهم لإسلامهم لأن فسقهم لا يخرجهم عن دائرة لا إله إلا الله he says, it is not permissible to hate or show, or show rancor to the corrupt or the sinful among the people of La ilaha illallah from any respect, especially those showing hatred towards the salihin. You read some of the email about what Muslims say about scholars, men who are, their whole life has been de dedicated to Islam calling people to the dean and you're seeing people e making emails slandering the character of this person. You can't do that, nor can you do that to the person who's a sin sinner. Why is that? Because the Rasul Islam, he was sent to bring, bring people out of the darkness into the light. And that is the proof of a religion. The proof of a religion is not that you can get all the goody two-shoes and make them good. Well, that's boring. The proof of a religion is that you can go into the prisons you can go on the streets where the gangs are. You can go into the dark neighborhoods where the prostitutes are and you bring them out of the darkness. That's the proof of a religion. If you can't do that, then that religion is dead. If it's just a bunch of goody two-shoes, people who couldn't make it in America or Canada so they convert, they revert back to Islam and find their religion, well, that's boring. A true religion is this ability to go into the darkness and bring people out of the darkness into the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In order to do this, you have to have a good opinion of even the fasikun among the people of la ilaha illallah. And then Imam Ibn Atayullah said, إِيَّاكَ وَمُعَادَةُ أَحْلِ لَا إِلَى اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ لَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وِلَايَةُ الْآمَةَ فَهُمْ أَوْلِيَ اللَّهِ وَلَوْ أَخْتَأُوا أَوْ جَاءُوا بِكُرَابِ الْأَرْضِ خَتَايًا لَا يُشْرِكُونَ بِاللَّهِ لَلَقِيِّهُمْ وَاللَّهُ بِمِلِهَا مَغْفِرَةً وَمَنْ ثَبَتَتْ وِلَايَتُهُ حَرُمَتْ مُحَرَبَتُهُ وَمَنْ حَرَبَهُ فَكَرْ حَرَبَ اللَّهُ وَمَنْ حَرَبَ اللَّهَ 
ومن حرب الله فقد ذكر الله جزاؤه في الدنيا والآخرة. Here, Sheikh Uthman ibn Furio quotes Ibn Atayilah where he says, Beware of showing enmity of the people of La ilaha illallah, for they have general friendship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for they are the awli of Allah, even if they were to make errors and were to come with errors as, as big as the earth, Allah, and, ha, and they have not associated any God besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will come with his equivalent in forgiveness. For whoever wilayat has been established for, then it is forbidden to have enmity towards him or hatred. And whoever shows makes war against him makes war against Allah. And whoever makes war against Allah, Allah has promised what he will do with him in this life and the next. It is based upon this that the Shaykh Uthman ibn Furio built his tajdeed. It is based upon this that tajdeed is built, first upon knowledge, not pre being preoccupied with the faults of people, then recognizing that there are disagreements among the scholars. That means you must know the disagreements. You must dive deep, not only from the Farad Ain, you must know the Farad Kifaya and find out the roots of the difference of the Mujtahid Imams to see how vast Islam is and how much of mercy it is. And then you have to have, look at the Fasikun, because we have to revive the people who are disobedient. We have to revive those who are slow in the deen and to bring them back to the deen. And then we have a responsibility to go to the kafirun and bring them to the deen. This is the foundation of tajdeed and can it not be done except with excellent character. And I will end by quoting a few verses from one Mujaddid in 1903. His name was Ahmed Ubaba. Uh, I will not read the Arabic, I'll read the English as fast as I can. It was a poem that he wrote when the French accused him of gathering weapons, because that's what they're doing now. We, have, we probably have some people in here. I'm not having a bad opinion of the Muslims, but there are probably some coffee room in here who probably think that we're gathering to talk about blowing up something, <laughs> right? <laughs> they accused him of gathering weapons for the jihad, and this was his response to them. He said, O party of those who make three of, uh, of the one God, who has no offspring nor, par nor parent, you infer about me saying that I am a slave of Allah and that I am one who struggles, a mujahid. You suspect that we have weapons. All of this from you is mere pettiness and envy. Your saying about me is true, for I am Allah's slave and the servant of the slave of Allah, the praised one, Muhammad. You are saying that I am a mujahid. Verily, for the sake of Allah, the majestic, I am struggling as a mujahid. He says, verily, I struggle with knowledge and fear of Allah. That's, his, that's his, his maidan, the place of his battlefield is with knowledge and taqwa. He says, in this I am a slave and servant and, in, and, and, and the protecting one is my witness. Verily Allah, it, to Allah I am a slave and a servant of the prophet and he is my forerunner and my witnessing intercessor. Uh, may the blessings of the Lord, the one God, be upon him along with peace upon his family and companions. He goes on to say, by means of him, Allah has sufficed me against the people of the book who are oppressors. For everything from them is, is done out of contention and envy. As for my swords, which those who make three gods fabricate against me, it is Allah's divine unity. He's counting his swords now, what weapons he stored up. He said, my first weapon is Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for my guns by which I banish the enemies and by which I disperse from around me the aims of pig-headed colonizers, it is the wise reminder of the Quran whose verses are decisive by which the desires of the defiant devils is ripped apart. By it, those who attempt to drive me out are themselves frustrated in this world and the next, for Allah is my Lord, the majestic. By it, I am saved from the plots. By it, I am, I am able to endure these nights of injustice. As for my spears, it is the prophet tradition, prophetic traditions, which have been related from the one who obliterates disbelief, the best of narrators. By it I tear apart heretical innovation which have been invented, and by it I have been made into a joyous servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for the branches of the religion, they are my arrows which I have sharpened. The branches of the religion are the burden or the, or the, or the, or the, or the buttress of the traditions. By them I have driven away the assaults of dubious actions, and by them the arrows of corruption is driven away from me. 
As for my spies, which, which gathers up secrets for me, it is spiritual purification by which I, I have been clothed in the most il illustrious serenity. By it I have been safeguarded with security in this life and the next, and by it what was deposited for me before from him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has been a sign for me. Here, uh, uh, Ahmed, ibn, uh, Ahmed Bamba is saying to the colonialists that you think I have weapons, you think I'm buying weapons to blow up buildings. No, the weapons that I'm gathering is knowledge and taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's fear of Allah, getting up at night, at night, fasting, having a good opinion of your brother, studying the Quran, studying the Hadith, living by it, practicing the purification of the heart. That is the weapon. Because when that person raises his hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer him and Allah will give him victory and know for a surety. I can see by the faces on every believer here that the victory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very close. Assalamu alaikum.